God has already blessed you, and it's about time that you know it and start walking in it. That's what we're going to be talking about today on Right Connection. So stay tuned for this exciting teaching. Right Connection Connecting us together Hello, and welcome to the Right Connection television broadcast. I'm Dr. Gloria Williams, and today you are in for a treat. I'm starting a new teaching series, and it's called It's Time. And today we're discussing that it's time you know you are blessed. As a believer in Christ, God has already decreed the blessing upon you, the blessing on your life. Now your job is to receive that blessing and to walk in it. And today I want to share with you just how to do that. So call a friend and tell someone to tune in as we join the message already in progress. I am starting a new teaching and uh, it's called, It's Time. It's time. It's time now for believers to come into their rightful place, their rightful stand in God. It's time for believers to understand and acknowledge and to know who we are, what we have in Him, what we can do in Him. It's time for believers to really, really trust the Lord the way that we say we do and act it out and walk it out in our lives. Today I want to talk to you about the fact that it's time to know you're blessed. There's going to be different segments to this teaching, it's time, but today's teaching is it's time to know you're blessed. Now this word blessed or blessing or blessed is the word in the um, Hebrew, barak, barak, B-A-R-A-K. The first A has a long uh, A sound. So it's talking about, this is what it means to barak. It means to speak well of, to speak blessings on. It means to uh, speak prosperity and well-being, to bestow favor, happiness, good fortune. It means to transfer good, to transfer authority. It means to declare blessings on offspring or descendants. That's what it means to bless. And so what the Lord is saying to us today is that as a Christian, as a child of God, as a believer, you are blessed. You're already blessed. God has declared all of these adjectives on your life. He's spoken all of these things over the life of the believer. We're going to see it in the Word of God. Now I want to establish that today, and I want to show you today so that when we leave today, there'll be no reason for us to wonder if we're blessed, to hope that we're blessed, or to beg God to bless us, or to cry about being blessed. We won't need to do that because we'll understand that we are already blessed. Amen? If you're already something, you don't have to ask for it. You don't have to ask God to bless you because he's already blessed you. That would be like me holding this piece of paper in my hand and uh, asking somebody, somebody please give me a piece of paper to hold in my hand. Well, that would, be, that would not be the best thing to ask, would it? You'd look at me and you say, well, Dr. G, you're holding paper in your hand already. Well, that's what it's like if you ask God, God bless me, pour your blessing on me. Well, God say, you already have my blessing. I've already blessed you. You, you have the blessing on you. Wear the blessing. Operate in the blessing. So we're going to see today how God speak the blessing on mankind. He has already spoken the blessing on mankind. We're going to see that God bestows and gives to us physical, temporal blessings. We'll also see the most important blessing that God has given to us, and that is the pronouncing of spiritual blessings on our lives. One is limited to just this earth realm. The other takes us out of this earth realm into the spiritual realm where we're going to spend eternity. Today we're going to start with Genesis chapter number one, so I want you to go there. I start there a lot because that's the very beginning. Go there. Now, we bless, we bless a lot of things in life. We bless our meals. We give thanks to God. 
Uh, during communion, we bless the bread, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 24. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, he blessed the food. He lifted it up, the Bible says. He blessed it, and he broke it, and then he distributed it. He fed 4,000 after that. He did the same thing. He lifted the food. He, he blessed it. He asked for the blessing of God on it. He, he gave the blessing of God on it, as a matter of fact. Uh, men bless God. We bow our knee. We acknowledge God. We reverence him. Uh, we thank him for his goodness and for his mercies in our lives. Uh, we give homage to God. We declare his great characteristics. We de declare his sovereignty and his mercies on our lives. That's blessing God. We bless God when we do that. Men bless one another. We bless each other. We speak good things over each other. We pronounce good in each other's lives. That's blessing each other. We, we speak blessings on one another. We tell each other how uh, uh, wonderful and good things are going to happen in our lives. Uh, we bestow favor on one another. We speak that. We give benedictions at the end of the services, and we bless the people. We uh, speak prosperity over people, and that's blessing mankind. That's a good thing, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. We invoke God's favor on each other's life, and that's great. But I want to talk today about the fact that God has blessed us. God blesses mankind. And we'll see that in Genesis chapter number one. Are you there? Yes. All right. King James Version, it says this, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, that is, in God's image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God did what? God blessed them. See, God blessed them from the very beginning. It was God's intent to have mankind live in the blessing. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Then God began to tell them how he would give them seed to eat and how he would give them herb, herbs that they could eat from. So God always intended for mankind to be prosperous to never live in poverty. Poverty is not some, something that God wants for his people. Poverty is a state of mind. It's a mindset. When you talk about poverty, you're not just talking about not having enough money. Uh, impoverished people in their mindset think they don't have enough of anything, don't have enough friends, don't have enough water, don't have enough food, don't have enough uh, uh, clothes, don't have enough uh, jobs, don't have enough this, don't have enough that. Impoverished people always think in the realm of lack. That's not what God intended for his people. We never want to think that we don't have enough, don't have enough help, don't have enough friends. No, that's a spirit of poverty. God wants us to think in advance. He wants us to think blessed. He wants us to think prosperous. He wants us to think increase in our lives. That's the kind of mindset that God wants us to have. When we have that kind of mi mindset about everything, it'll also uh, wear itself over into the realm of financial. We'll have financial increase and financial blessing. But I want you to see here in this verse, in this passage, that God blessed Adam and Eve. He started out with the blessing. Are you seeing that? He blessed them. Now go over to Genesis chapter number 5. And here's a confirmation on it. It says it again. Verse number two. This is the generations of Adam. Male and female created he, God, them, Adam and Eve, and did what? Bless them. God invoked good and he invoked authority on them. He gave them goodwill, he spoke goodness over them, and he spoke authority over them, prosperity and well-being. And he called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So God is not, it's not something that he does, so to speak, or something that uh, he physically hands to you that gives you the blessing. No, it's not the things that we think are blessings that is actually the blessing. The blessing we have as a spoken proclamation, the pronouncement of God on our lives, he has blessed us. And as a result of God speaking the blessing on us, then we inherit blessings, things. You know what I'm talking about? Material things. The material things are not really the blessing. 
The blessing is the anointed word that God has spoken over mankind. That's what the blessing is. It comes from God. He has already spoken that on your life. You don't need to ask God for a blessing. And it's not having things that cause you to be blessed. No, no, no. The blessing is the anointing that God has spoken on your life. And he spoke it from the beginning of time. He spoke it over Adam and Eve. He blessed them. He pronounced a blessing on them out of his mouth. And he has done that. I'm going to show you it wasn't just for Adam and Eve. I'm going to show you how you and I fit into that. Go to Genesis chapter number 12, would you? God has blessed mankind. He speaks the blessing or has spoken the blessing on mankind. Genesis chapter number 12. And verse 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now God's telling Abram, he's not just telling Abram to leave his family. I've told you this before. He doesn't just want people just to leave their family. But Abram's family were idol worshipers. They were worshiping idol gods. And God saw something in Abram that was different from that. So he says, I want to get you away from this idol worship. I want to get you away from this kind of environment and this kind of uh, circumstance so that I can take you to a good place. I'm going to take you to a wealthy place, Abram. I'm going to take you to a place where you'll have prosperity in your life. Because, see, you can never have prosperity when you're worshiping idol gods. When you worship idols, you can never prosper in life. When you have the blessing on your life, it's because you worship the true and the living God. That's where the blessing comes from. Amen? Dr. Gloria will continue this powerful teaching momentarily. Here's what's in store after the break. Sometimes you wonder, why am I in this place? Why am I at this job? Why am I in this situation? Why am I in this environment? Because you have the blessing on you. And God wants that blessing that's on you to touch the life of somebody else. God wants to expose somebody to the blessing. And he wants them to sense and see and acknowledge that blessing on your life. You say, I'm getting up out of here. I'm leaving this, I'm leaving this job. I'm leaving this place. I'm... No, no, God has you there for purpose. See, you're not just in a place or where you are just for the sake of being there. God is a God of purpose. And God has purpose in mind when he has us wherever we are. And you're where you are. You're in the place where you are so that the blessing can rest in that place. Your, some of your jobs are anointed and continuing and blessed because you, the blessed, with the blessing on you, you're in that place. Amen. We believe that today's message was a blessing to you. To order this message in its entirety, write and send your request to Right Connection, Post Office Box 172-570, Hylia, Florida, 33017. CDs are only $7 and DVDs are only $20. You may also visit our online bookstore at JesusPeopleMiami.org for additional media resources that will strengthen and encourage your faith.